Hello, this is Alex. Welcome to my channel, which is all about health and well-being. In this video, I talk briefly about acne, potential causes and treatments, both conventional and complementary. Just a disclaimer, I am not a practicing doctor or health professional. Although I have studied health science, I am not practicing. I just have an interest in health and am creating content for anyone interested in it. The information I share will not necessarily work well for everyone. What is acne? Acne is a common inflammatory disease of the sebaceous glands in the areas of the skin where these glands are large and thickly clustered, for example the face, chest, shoulders and neck. Acne has its origin in the skin pore or the pillow sebaceous unit. These units consist of a hair follicle and the associated sebaceous glands which are connected to the skin by the follicular canal through which the hair shaft passes. The sebaceous glands produce sebum, which is a mixture of oils and waxes, which lubricates the skin and prevents loss of water. Sebaceous glands are most highly concentrated on the face and to a lesser extent on the back, chest and shoulders. Acne is most common among males with the onset usually at puberty. This is due to the fact that male sex hormones such as testosterone stimulate the cells that line the follicular canal to produce keratin, which is a fibrous protein, the main component of the outermost layer of the skin, as well as of the hair and nails. Too much keratin can block the skin pores. The testosterone causes the sebaceous glands to enlarge and produce more sebum. So higher testosterone levels increase the chance of pores becoming blocked by excessive keratin or too much sebum. While boys are at risk, there is an increase in testosterone level in girls during puberty, making them susceptible as well. While acne onset is usually due to increased testosterone, the severity and progression of acne is determined by a complex interaction among hormonal factors, keratin-producing cells, sebum and bacteria. The male hormones control sebaceous gland secretion and exacerbate the development of abnormal growth of the hair follicle cells, but excessive secretion of male hormones is not necessarily the cause, since there's only a poor correlation between blood levels of these hormones and severity of the disease. The skin of patients with acne shows greater activity of an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, which converts testosterone to a more potent form known as DHT. In other words, it is not necessarily an increase in testosterone levels in the blood that leads to acne. It's how the skin metabolizes this hormone. Acne occurs in 80% of teenagers. That's not surprising. Superficial acne consists of blackheads or whiteheads, inflamed papules, pustules and superficial cysts. This acne can often heal without scars, however, if one squeezes or scratches their blackheads, this may increase scarring. Deep acne is the same as superficial acne, with the addition of deep inflamed nodules and pus-filled cysts, which often rupture and become abscesses, which can open on the skin surface and discharge their contents. Deep acne is most common on the face, but the neck, chest, upper back and shoulders may also be affected, and scarring is common. How is acne formed? Acne starts forming near the surface of the skin pore when the cells that line the canal start producing too much keratin, which eventually leads to blockage of the canal, resulting in ballooning and thinning. Eventually a whitehead or blackhead is formed. A blackhead will form if the blockage is incomplete, allowing the sebum to make its way to the surface, thereby avoiding inflammation of a whitehead, and a whitehead will form if the blockage is complete. With the blockage of the canal, a bacterium known as Propioneobacterium acnes is allowed to overgrow and release enzymes, which break down sebum and promote inflammation. The redness of pimples is a result of this inflammation. If the bacterium grows out of control or if the inflammation is severe, it can result in the rupture of the wall of the hair canal and damage to surrounding tissue. 
If this happens at the skin surface, it causes superficial redness and pustules. However, if it occurs deeper within the skin, a nodule or a cyst can form, leading to more significant damage and possibly scar formation. The three major forms of acne are acne vulgaris, acne conglobate and acne rosacea. Acne vulgaris is the least severe form of acne. It is a superficial form of acne that affects the hair follicles and oil-secreting glands of the skin. It manifests as blackheads, whiteheads and inflammation. The lesions occur mostly on the face and to a lesser extent on the back, chest and shoulders. It is common among males and onset is typically at puberty. It is activated by androgens in those genetically predisposed. Androgens stimulate the cells that line the follicular canal to produce keratin and cause the sebaceous glands to enlarge, produce more sebum, blocks off and oil accumulates. Bacteria accumulates in the oil producing blackheads, whiteheads and inflammation papules. Acne conglobate is a more severe form of acne with cyst formation and subsequent scarring. The lesions occur mostly on the face and to a lesser extent on the back, chest and shoulders. It is common among males and onset is typically at puberty. Acne rosacea is a chronic inflammatory disorder, usually beginning in middle age or later. Acne rosacea is a chronic inflammatory disorder which is relatively common among young adults or adults aged 30 up to 50, with women affected about three times as often as men, but in men it is more severe. It is also more common in people with fair skin. It is associated with facial flushing, especially cheeks and nose. Most cases are associated with moderate to severe levels of excess sebum. The cheeks and nose may be covered with pimples similar to those seen in acne. The causes of rosacea are unknown, however, it is believed that diet is unlikely to contribute. Other factors which have been suspected include alcoholism, menopausal flushing, local infection, vitamin B deficiencies, gastrointestinal disorders, stress and worry. Medical or conventional treatment for superficial pustular acne includes topical clindamycin or erythromycin alone with a follicular drug, which is often the most useful. Side effects of erythromycin and doxycycline include possible gastrointestinal symptoms and possible photosensitivity from doxycycline. Retinoid acid and azalic Azalic acid cream, which is antibacterial, may also be good for inflammatory acne. Adapalene, which is a new topical retinoid, may be slightly less irritating than topical tretinoitin or tretinoin. These retinoids must be applied carefully and at night. If using these medications, it is recommended to limit sun exposure and use of other drugs to prevent severe irritation. On taking these medications, the acne may worsen at first, but improves after about three to four weeks. Possible side effects of Retin-A are quite severe peeling and drying. Other topical medications include over-the-counter and oral antibiotics. Treatment for deep acne requires a broad-spectrum oral antibiotic, a cost-effective one being tetracycline. Because relapse usually follows short-term treatment, it is recommended to continue treatment for months to years. Minocycline is more expensive yet is often recommended because of its efficiency, lack of gastrointestinal side effects, simplified dosing and lack of photosensitization. Side effects of minocycline may include dizziness and pigmentation of skin and mucous membranes. For very severe deep acne, or if antibiotics don't work, oral isotretinoin, isotretinoin is recommended, but it should only be used by doctors who are familiar with its adverse effects. Women at risk of pregnancy should use two methods of contraception for one month before taking the drug, while taking the drug and at least one month after discontinuing it. Pregnancy tests before beginning therapy and at monthly intervals are recommended. After using it, acne may continue to improve. 
Most patients do not need a second course of treatment. However, retreatment is needed more often if the initial dose is low. Low doses cause less side effects. However, longer term use is usually needed. Because many people have been treated with long-term broad-spectrum antibiotics, they often develop intestinal overgrowth of yeast candida albicans. This can make acne worse and must be treated when present. In addition to oral antibiotics, other popular treatments are over-the-counter preparations containing benzoyl peroxide, which acts as a skin antiseptic to keep the growth of bacteria down. It is most effective in superficial pimples that are inflamed. To be effective, benzoyl peroxide preparations must be applied daily. The most common adverse effect of prolonged antibiotic use in women is candida. Long-term use of antibiotics can produce a gram-negative pustular folliculitis around the nose and in the centre of the face. This is uncommon and may be difficult to clear and is best treated with oral isotretinoin after stopping the oral antibiotic. Side effects are they tend to dry out the skin and cause redness and peeling. Other potential side effects of the above-mentioned treatments include dryness of conjunctiva and chapped lips. Musculoskeletal symptoms, or like pain or stiffness in the joints or of the lower back, occur in about 15% of patients. Liver function, cholesterol and triglyceride levels should also be checked before treatment. However, triglycerides rarely increase to a level at which the drug should be discontinued, and liver function is rarely affected. Complementary treatments for acne. This includes diet, which should be low in fat, sugar, refined carbohydrates, iodine, fried foods and dairy. Dairy can cause allergies and has a high hormone content. Diet should be higher in whole grains, especially oats, buckwheat, millet and brown rice, and fresh fruits and vegetables, soy, pure water and protein. A diet high in fibre, especially water-soluble fibre such as oat bran, rice bran, zillium, bentonite clay, is important for bowel function and removing toxemia, which helps reduce acne. Acidophilus and bifidus bacteria help to regulate bowel microflora, which can improve acne. Juices with lemon, grapefruit, beetroot and green vegetables, especially spinach, celery, parsley and also carrot, wheatgrass, watercress, increases elimination and detoxification of the skin. Liver detox. Liver extracts promote liver regeneration, such as methionine or methionine, cysteine, vitamins B9 and B12, desiccated liver and carnitine for fat metabolism. Supplements for acne include vitamin A, however, this should be avoided in high doses because it can cause toxicity resulting in headaches, muscle fatigue, dry lips and vomiting. But vitamin C and zinc can help reduce toxicity of vitamin A. Other supplements which help include vitamin E, vitamin B complex, selenium, essential fatty acids which help inflammation, so they should be consumed orally rather than topically, and brewer's yeast if not allergic to yeast or not prone to gout. Other non-conventional treatments may include sun lamps and UV light, seawater, skin brushing before taking a shower, and alternating warm and cold showers. Effective herbal remedies include those for the liver, such as dandelion, also burdock, yellow dock, golden seal, lemongrass, clivers, sarsaparilla, which is good for hormone balancing, red clover, blue flag and nettle. Other herbs which can help acne and also stimulate the immune system, such as echinacea, myrrh and astragalus, also globe artichoke, ginseng, oats, vervain, skullcap and chamomile. Also, diaphoretic herbs, which in induce perspiration and sweating, which include yarrow and burdock. Topical treatments include calendula washes and ointments, witch hazel, chamomile, tea tree oil, especially if candida is present, eucalyptus oil, vitamin A, 
retinoic acid cream, bentonite clay masks, oatmeal scrubs, fresh lemon or cabbage juice applied to the affected areas, and lime flowers which purify and disinfect, followed by witch hazel or rose water to close the pores. Comfrey root powder can be applied to the affected areas. Once it dries, it can be peeled off. Tea tree oil is known for its antiseptic and antifungal properties. In a study at Royal Prince Hospital, a 5% tea tree oil solution showed beneficial effects similar to those of 5% benzoyl peroxide in treating acne, but with less side effects. However, this 5% tea tree oil solution is probably not strong enough for moderate to severe acne. Solutions up to 15% should provide better results. It is safe to use as a topical antiseptic, but can occasionally produce contact dermatitis. Other topical applications include hawthorn decoction of flowers and berries. Also, soaps and skin creams containing neem oil can help prevent pores from becoming infected. Many dermatologists say insulin is effective in treating acne. Insulin regulates blood sugar levels by promoting uptake of sugar by body cells. One study that compared the results of oral glucose tolerance tests in acne patients showed no differences between those who received insulin and the control group. However, analysis of the level of glucose in the skin showed that patients with acne do not metabolize sugar properly. One researcher of the role of glucose tolerance in acne referred to acne as skin diabetes. The fact that insulin appears helpful also suggests impaired uptake of blood sugar by skin cells due to insensitivity to insulin. In several studies, insulin given either systemically by injection or injected directly into the lesion resulted in big improvement. Rather than use insulin, it makes more sense to try improving the situation by eliminating all concentrated refined sugar from the diet. Supplements that help include chromium, as it improves glucose tolerance and enhances insulin sensitivity, and has been reported in an uncontrolled study to quickly improve acne. Vitamin A has been shown to reduce sebum production and build-up of keratin in the follicle. Unfortunately, the doses effective in treating acne are high and potentially toxic. High-dose vitamin A should not be used without close supervision by a physician. Lab tests appear unreliable in monitoring for vitamin A toxicity until obvious toxicity has developed. The first symptom of vitamin A toxicity is usually a headache and then fatigue, plus emotional instability and muscle and joint pain. Other early signs are chapped lips and dry skin. Because high doses of vitamin A during pregnancy can cause birth defects, women of childbearing age should use birth control during vitamin A treatment for at least one month after discontinuation. Using high doses of vitamin A is not necessary if other nutritional factors such as zinc and vitamin E are included. These work well together in promoting healthy skin. Optimal zinc levels are a primary therapeutic goal in natural treatment of acne. Zinc is involved in the proper metabolism of testosterone. When zinc levels are low, there's an increase in the conversion of testosterone to DHT, which stimulates the making of sebum and keratin. Zinc is involved in vitamin A function, wound healing, immune system activity, inflammation control and tissue regeneration. Low zinc plays a central role in many cases of adolescent acne as zinc levels are lower in 13 and 14 year old males than in any other age group. There is controversy, however, about the effectiveness of zinc because in some studies, zinc has produced excellent results in some, but no results in others. The inconsistency of the results may be due to the differing rates of absorption and use of the forms of zinc used. For example, studies that used effervescent zinc sulfate showed effects similar to those of tetracycline with less side effects from chronic use. Studies that used plain zinc sulfate have shown less beneficial results. 
Most patients who responded to zinc needed 12 weeks of supplementation before good results were demonstrated, although some showed dramatic improvement immediately. In a study, 66 patients with inflammatory acne were given zinc gluconate or a placebo for two months. Based on the number and severity of lesions, an inflammatory score was given to each patient. In the placebo group, the inflammatory score dropped from 58 to 47 during the two-month period, while in the treatment group, the score dropped from 49 to 27. Physicians rated 24 of 32 patients in the zinc group as responding to treatment compared to only 8 of 34 in the placebo group. Vitamin E is important for acne, but also for the proper function of vitamin A. During vitamin E deficiency, blood levels of vitamin A stay low regardless of the amount of oral or intravenous vitamin A supplementation. Blood levels of vitamin A return to normal after vitamin E is restored to the diet. Vitamin E is also important for its interactions with selenium, which is an important antioxidant trace mineral that functions in the enzyme glutathione peroxidase, which is important in preventing the inflammation of acne. Acne patients usually have low glutathione peroxidase levels. After using vitamin E and selenium, glutathione peroxidase levels increase and acne diminishes. Women who have acne aggravated by menstruation often respond well to vitamin B6, reflecting its role in the normal metabolism of steroid hormones. Pantothenic acid is important in fat metabolism and may be effective at high doses in treating acne. A study that was given pantothenic acid and a cream consisting of pantothenic acid applied to the affected areas, within one or two days after starting, there was a noticeable decrease in sebum secretion. Within one to two weeks, new acne eruptions decreased and existing lesions faded. No side effects were noted. The administration of large doses of vitamin B has been shown to be quite effective in treating rosacea, with riboflavin appearing to be the key factor. A small organism, a skin mite named Demodex folliculorum, has been considered a causative factor in rosacea. Researchers were able to infect the skin of riboflavin deficient rats with Demodex, but not the skin of normal rats normal rats. This may be a factor in the clinic, clinical improvement noted with vitamin B treatment. Other non-conventional treatments for acne include correcting an underactive thyroid. Azalic acid is naturally occurring and has an antibiotic activity against acnes. Clinical studies using 20% azalic acid creams have shown it produces results equal to those achieved with benzoyl peroxide, retinol A or oral tetracycline. It's shown to help treat all types of acne. To be effective, it must be applied to affected areas twice daily for at least four weeks and usually has to be continued for at least six months to maintain the benefits produced after the first month. Sulfur is a topical antiseptic like benzoyl peroxide, but not as potent or irritating. Sulfur formulas are still around, but have been replaced by newer compounds like benzoyl peroxide. Preparations of 3 to 10% sulfur have produced good results and are widely accepted as therapeutic that the FDA has approved sulfur as a safe and effective acne treatment. Sulfur-containing products for acne are available in health food stores and pharmacies. Another word of advice is to wash your pillowcase regularly. Treatment for gastric-related rosacea. Gastric analysis has led to the theory that rosacea results from hypochlorhydria, or a reduced gastric output. Psychological factors such as worry, depression and stress often reduce gastric acidity, which may explain why the rosacea is worse sometimes than at other times. Hydrochloric acid supplementation results in marked improvement in rosacea patients who have insufficient hydrochloric acid secretion. Rosacea patients also have been shown to have decreased secretion of the pancreatic enzyme lipase, 
and to benefit from supplementation with pancreatin. Also, supplementing with B vitamins helps to normalise sebum production. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this type of content, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more informative videos on health and well-being. Also, feel free to leave a comment. Have you suffered with acne? Have you tried any of the above-mentioned treatments? If so, have you had any success with it? Otherwise, what treatments have helped you? I would love to know what has worked. Share it in the comments below. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.